We're Ilya and Azra, and after finally purchasing our first van, we proceeded to repair some of the major dents and rust spots, remove the old flooring and panels, and install two windows. While Azra is in Spain on her student exchange, it's time to get my hands dirty with insulating the van. Welcome to Van Lifea. Yeah. The OSB and plywood that we ordered should be coming in the day after tomorrow. And meanwhile, so I can make use of time and not just sit around and wait, we're going to be spray foaming some of these little holes. The foam will expand two to three times. That's a lot of expansion. Well, I sprayed these down pretty well, hoping it's going to make a difference and not do too much damage and it's not just six bucks wasted for that can of foam. <laughs> we still got time so I'm thinking why not start with the mineral wool in the little other smaller crevices. Now the thing about mineral wool it's pretty fluffy so it's really easy to cram it and compress it but the thing is the more you compress it the less insulation it gives because it becomes more dense and there's less air and it's the air that it keeps inside which is actually what gives the insulation so you have to have it at maximum expansion but again be able to cram it into all the little holes so it's a really tough balance to keep again i know all this theoretically not because i'm an experienced builder i mean look at that fluff like EPS and XPS boards or rigid boards, they are hydrophobic. They don't like water, they reject water, and it's not so much of a problem, moisture, vapor, and those things. But wool is hydrophilic, it likes water, and it accepts water, which is okay, as long as you got good ventilation to make sure it has the opportunity to dry out. Ah, so far so good. I'm now thinking about this term called the vapor barrier. There's a lot of debate going on about it. Pretty much you have something plasticky, something waterproof that you seal so good to the body of the van that it completely seals this off and prevents hydrophilic materials like mineral wool from getting any vapor and getting wet whatsoever. But I think the general verdict is that you can never make a vapor barrier so perfect that it doesn't let any humidity inside. So it's gonna get up, end up getting wet anyway. And the problem is then vapor has a really hard time getting out. So you have no ventilation inside, which can start getting mold. Um, these things get heavy with water, so they start sliding down, ruining your insulation, all kinds of problems. So I think the general conclusion is you can't make a perfect vapor barrier, so it's better to focus on good ventilation and keeping the air flowing inside the van as much as possible. I am a little worried about good ventilation because as we said before, this is a test van. We're just doing like quick, easy elements to it. And among other things, we didn't want to drill a hole, like cut out a hole in the roof for the ventilator. And the fan, the roof fan, is a really important aspect of ventilation. So without it, it's gonna be a lot more complicated. But at the same time, it's probably gonna take us a while to get accustomed to full-time van life if we're going in that direction. So that being said, we probably won't be full-time in it, which means if we're out, <coughs> we're out in some beautiful place and we can keep the windows and doors open. <coughs> Excuse me. Next up is insulation of the walls. For example, this wall over here, it has absolutely no functionality. It's just a wall. So we can start with isolating, insulating that part, the wall behind me, these little big gaps in the doors I left, especially for the EPS. EPS, AKA styrofoam, is cheap, it's light, it is not closed cell. So you have closed cell foam, which is this foam board, which means it's completely airproof. And then you have open cell. Since it's comprised of these tiny little bubbles, there are chances that air gets through, but because it's really thick, it's five centimeters, I doubt it. And it's quite a bit cheaper, which is why I opted for this thick one for the walls. We have just begun and look at the mess we made already. <laughs> this is gonna be hilarious. But here's the thing. Aside from just being curvy, the walls of the van have all kinds of weird things sticking out like this and like this. So you also have to cut out pieces from the insulation that will make fit for this and like screws like this, corners like this. 
and let all you see this I'm gonna have to cut all along the corner of the styrofoam so that it fits in there other than that it's a pretty good first cut see perfect fit perfect fit up here can't go inside because of this little ledge on the inside and boom one wall is completely done well except for the little wood pieces and extra thin insulation that will go here but now that i kind of got the hang of it um let me show you quickly what the process looks like first i measure the size then i measure the piece then i cut the piece then i do this ninja thing ah! then i test it and realize everything is at an angle then i start cutting this whole thing at an angle then i analyze dumb corners like this this and even this and make the appropriate cuts in the board and then i jam it in then i do a couple more pieces on the side and i have to leave a center piece so that i can shove it in and then i stuff these weird corners with some mineral wool well i made a huge mess but we got most of the bigger panels in at least the back the middle have to play around with the windows a bit i got kind of bored to be honest so i started taking out this here barrier and so this barrier between the front and the back has to go away in order for us to be able to certify as a camper so i'm taking an allen key and pliers jamming it in there giving it a few of the initial turns ah get it unstuck and then this power thing on my jig does the rest of the magic do your magic thing on a jig But I'm not going to be taking it out just yet because it's keeping things nice and tidy and it's also giving extra insulation while I'm working here in the cold and I don't have anywhere to store it. I have to get some plastic, wrap it around, keep it somewhere outside. So that's an adventure for another day. Took all the screws out. 